Today we're going to be creating a digital clock that has an alarm functionality built into it. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of DevDrawer. Today we're going to be going over how to build a clock. Last week we built a countdown timer that counts down from whatever number to zero um, and then it's you know it just counts down so I figured we'd go the opposite direction and uh, just do a clock and then maybe set an alarm to go with that clock so in order to get started I'm going to create a index.html file I'm going to go ahead and set it to go live so that we can see the changes and then let's just do our regular HTML5 and let's just call this, uh, let's do clock with alarm. So it's pretty simple, just like the other uh, that we were doing um, with the, uh, the countdown, we're just going to create a class and then we're going to um, basically use that to display the clock and then we're going to modify it so that we can set an alarm that we want to use. So let's go ahead and create the file structure that we need. So first thing I'm going to do is create our JavaScript folder. And then let's go ahead and create a SAS folder because I want to go ahead and have that automatically uh, running. So let's do style.scss. And then we're going to watch our SAS. So we get our CSS files created. And then up here, let's do link rel style sheet. And then the source or the href for this is going to be CSS. And then we're just going to use the minified version of it. And then down here, we're going to create a JavaScript file. And I'm just going to call it clock.js. Okay, so over here, let's go ahead and link out to that. So we can start populating our data. Okay, so I'm going to just do a div uh, with the main class on it and then let's do a div ID of time and then under this let's do a div ID alarm inside of this alarm we want to be able to display some numbers so I'm just going to create a blank span tag here and then we will eventually add a button and we will add a, the, the audio that's gonna go with the alarm, but I just wanna get the countdown part of it started. So inside of our clock.js, we're just gonna create our class, clock, and let's do our constructor. Right now we're not gonna be passing any variables to it, but we will pass variables whenever we actually go to call it. And then down here, we would just do something like new clock and then we'll actually have the constructor call the class for us so whenever we go to run this in our index.html we we'll just put in the new clock here and then pass the variables in but right now we're going to keep everything down here so inside of our constructor we want to um, set the default time so I'm going to do uh, let time uh, let's say like let time div equals document dot query selector and we're just going to be passing one um, actually up here let me go ahead and do this dot time div equals time div and let's pass this as a variable so time div and then here we're just going to pass the div that we created time so now we have where we can pass this time div to actually um, create the the div or to to grab the div from the HTML that uh, references the ID time before I get too far into it um, I want to modify the style CSS uh, because uh, it's gonna make it where you're not gonna be able to read it so let me come over here and do body. So let's do body. We're going to set our font family 
to uh, Fajalia, Fajala one. And then we're just gonna make it sans serif. Uh, let's do text align center. And set our background color. Just make it uh, black. And let's make this position relative height 100 vertical height. Overflow is going to be hidden. And I went ahead and added some images. So like I have a background, a logo, and then I even added a sound for the alarm uh, so that we can use those and I won't have to dig through it. So um, I want to make the background image. And this is going to be equal to BGJPEG. And then I want to make this background size cover. So it's getting a little bit more styled um, so that we'll be able to see it whenever we actually get there. So we wrapped everything in a main div and the reason why we did that is because I want to have it all centered and if you've ever watched any of my videos you'll see what I'm fixing to do uh, basically centers a div inside of a div. So we do top left 50% and then we're going to do a transform uh, let's see, transform, um, translate, and then we're going to do negative 50%, and let's do a negative 60% there. And whenever I start adding text to it, you'll actually see what's happening. But for right now, I just want to make sure that everything is centered where it needs to go. Okay, um, next, let's go ahead and do our time, because that's our div that's going to contain the text. So let's make that white let's add a text shadow to it so let's do a text shadow three pixels three pixels zero pixels and then i'm going to do 60 60 60 to give it like a uh, like a grayish color behind it and then let's make our font size 100 pixels okay so now we can go back over to our clock js and start actually adding some time in here so let's do let time equal, and let me minimize that. So let time equal, um, no, we got to do the new date first. So let t equal new date. And then this is going to be t dot to local time string. I'm going to pass this in. And then I want to have it set a certain way. So we don't want to use the entire date. We're just going to do um, hour. Uh, we want to do two digits for the whole thing just to make it easier. So two digit. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the minutes and the seconds because we want to use all three of them for our countdown. So we got hour, second, and then minute. Okay, so now we have our time there. So let's do Tim dot inner HTML equals time. I think I need to modify my style sheet a little bit more. So the time is it's font size 100. Uh, let me do margin one rem zero. Okay, so that didn't help, so it has to be over here. So let's go over here and let's do display flex uh, justify content center. Then we're going to do align items center. And then flex direction. And let's make this a column. There we go. All right, so that's better. So now we have our hour, minute, second, and then AM or PM. And let me reset this to about right there. Okay, so now we have our time 
it is being populated so what I want to do now is let's create a function and we're gonna call this uh, let's see I want to call it update time and it's essentially going to be the same that we have up here so we can copy all of this and paste it down and then after it gets the initial time we want it to do something on an interval so we're going to do set interval this dot update time dot bind to this and then we want it to run every thousand sec or a thousand milliseconds which is one second as you can see over here it is now counting up and once it gets to the zero zero it's going to go back to the 17 over here and there's increments so right now we have a working digital clock okay so now we have this uh, digital clock that's being sent over so I want to pass in the alarm so let's create us a second variable here called alarm and we want to make sure that we're passing this alarm div as well okay so let's come over here and create our alarm so let's do set alarm and we just want it to display the text underneath it so let's do a constant alarm equals document dot query selector and then we have that span tag inside of this so we're going to do this dot alarm div span and now we're going to do alarm dot enter text and we're going to have it equal to uh, let's just say alarm for right now okay so let me view this this should be updating so the alarm this currently doesn't have anything inside of it oh that's because we're not calling it so let's go ahead and call it before it gets to the set interval so we're going to do this dot set alarm and that should be updating now okay well I forgot up here we're going to do this dot alarm dev equals alarm div there we go all right, so now it's setting the word alarm. So let's make it where it actually sets an alarm that we can pass to it. Um, so let's say if I want the alarm to be, let's say 0300000 PM. So we're going to be passing this now. So let's go ahead and add this as alarm time. And then now here we're gonna do this dot alarm time equals alarm time and then down here we can just pass it um, as a string so this alarm time is what's being passed so we have it set for 3 o'clock p.m. okay so right now we have all of the information that we need set um, let's go ahead and create the uh, the variable that's going to hold our alarm sound so out below the span let's do an audio tag so we're going to do audio ID equals alarm audio and in order for this to work on a browser like Chrome there are some things that you need to do um, first of all we need to make it have have it play on a loop and we need to have it turned off initially and then autoplay set on and let's go ahead and load the source and we're gonna do sounds alarm mp3 and let me take off mute it for now so we can see if it actually plays alright so it's playing so let's turn the mute back on and the reason why we're having to mute it is because um, with Chrome you need to have some kind of interaction which we will get into whenever we start doing more of the JavaScript where we actually modify the audio parameters but uh, per the uh, I guess it's the um, audio element browser policies you have to have user interaction if this is just something that you have with your website itself 
you can simply click on this little eye up here. You won't be able to see what's happening, but if you, when you click on the little eye, it's gonna bring up the information about it. And then you can go to site settings. And then down here, you can have your sound set to allow. Um, otherwise, you need to have a button that allows the user to be able to click to be able to play that element. Since we're using this as a alarm clock, um, okay, let me mute this for now. Um, yeah, I have it on mute over here, but we'll get to that in just a second. But right now, it is um, allowing it to play at all times because um, we having just just this having uh, it's set up as an alarm clock for us internally. So again, it's a browser policy, um, something you can't really do anything about that I know of. So we just make it where it mutes itself and then we allow it to play internally or you just have to have a button that either opens up an alarm clock or whatever it is that starts this element. But keep it on mute and have it auto play loop and then we'll control it whenever we actually get to the JavaScript part of it, which we will do now. So we have our set alarm we want to create another function that's going to be play alarm. And we want to call this function whenever this update time hits something very specific. So we're going to do if time equals this dot alarm time. That's whenever we want it to run the alarm. So this dot play alarm. And this is basically going to be where Whenever this time that's being currently incremented into, if it hits the time that we are setting up here as our alarm time or down here inside the actual call at three o'clock, that's whenever the alarm will go off. So inside of our play alarm, we uh, are going to be setting the, setting the time to zero, um, making it where it's no longer muted, so forth and so on. So let's do this dot alarm. Uh, this dot alarm uh, audio, which I do not have set. That's why it's not appearing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So current time equals zero. And that needs to be a capital T. So up here, we need to create that variable. So let me push these down a little bit to keep them separated. And then we're going to do this dot alarm audio equals document dot query selector and then we're going to pass in this dot alarm div and then we s called this the ID of alarm underscore audio okay so now we have the alarm audio that can actually be accessed so down here the current time is alarm audio or the audio current time is zero and then we want to do, uh, let me just copy this because we're going to use it a few times. So this mute it equals false. And then we're going to do volume just because the, uh, the sound that I used is kind of loud. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 and then I want to play it. So this will um, essentially play the alarm and we can test that out by going down here and instead of doing this let's do 25 25 and let me unmute this so it should have started playing failed because it did not interact with it um, I think maybe because I muted it let's go back to my site settings and let's put allow here for the sound. Now let's refresh that. Um, so it's playing automatically right now, which it's not supposed to be doing. And I have a feeling that it's because I put mute instead of muted. So obviously now it's playing like it should. So now if we go back to here and let's update this again. So let's go to 26, uh, let's do 35 seconds. So our alarm is set at 226.35, which should be happening right now. And our time is starting. So let me go ahead and set this to a different time so it goes away. Okay, so our alarm is working. Um, 
Now there are some other things I want to add. So for example, whenever this thing starts, I want to be able to turn it off. So I want to be able to mute that alarm. So right below my span, above my audio tag, I'm going to do a button. And this is just going to be a regular button type. And I'm going to make it ID uh, turn off alarm. Turn off alarm. Okay, so right now we have our button. Um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit nicer looking. So let's switch back over to our styles. We have our time here, so let's come in here and do our alarm. And I wanna make this where it's semi-transparent, so we're gonna do RGBA 255, 255, and then let's just make it uh, 0.5 uh, opacity. Okay, now let's do our font size, make it a little bit bigger, so I think 30 pixels would probably be enough. Okay, and then for the button, let's style it. So it's going to be, let's make it where it is uh, display. Uh, let's do, well, we're gonna have it display none, so let's, let's not do this one yet. Um, let's do background color, let's make it transparent. Give it a border, one pixel solid make it a white border with a white text all right that's looking good and let's do our padding of 15 pixels and then 20 pixels let's make the font size a little bit bigger so I think 20 pixels would probably be sufficient for that uh, let's give it a cursor pointer um, and then we want it to um, so we want to make a width of 250 pixels, not 205. Let's do 250. Margin auto. So we're just going to hide that for now, and then we're going to have it where it displays using the JavaScript. So let's do display none. Okay, that looks good. So now inside of our clock.js, let's actually make that uh, whenever the alarm is being played, that it goes in there and gives you the stop button. So let's do document dot query selector. We're going to pass in this dot alarm div, and this is going to be plus button. And we want to do style dot dis style dot display equals block. Now I'm going to copy this because there's a few other things that I want to do to it as well. So take this. We want to add an event listener to it. So that event listener is going to look something like this. So let's do add event listener. And then we want to have it where whenever you click on it, let's do our arrow function. We're going to do this dot turn off alarm then this dot alarm audio is what we want to pass so let's create this function now so we're going to do turn off alarm and it's going to pass alarm audio and then basically we're going to take all of this stuff and I'm just going to copy it down for now and we don't need this in front of this anymore and because it's a click event that's happening after everything's loaded, we are passing the alarm audio to it so that it just knows where it needs to go. Um, so let's say we're gonna have muted as true. Um, we don't really care where the current position is because that's gonna get reset. And then, um, I think that's it. So we don't need any of these. So we're gonna mute the audio again. And then I want to make it where the button disappears again. So we're gonna take this and do none. And let's see how that looks. So let's go back down here. And let's change this to 2.31.45. So let's count down until we get there now. So our button is available and if we click it, it should go off.
there we go so now the button hides the time stops and essentially if you allow this to run it'll hit that alarm every single day as long as these numbers match um, so yeah you could pretty much run it every day now uh, I also want to make it a little bit more hey you got an alert here so inside of let's see what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do it right here or actually after this so I'm going to do document dot query selector. Uh, no, let's not do it that way. Let's do document dot body dot style dot background, and then I want to make this equal to. I want to make it equal to my blue. So three eight a four e f. So now, whenever the alarm goes off, the background should turn into my blue background. So whenever that happens, I want the button click to happen and to essentially reset the body background back to the, the, the background image. So we're going to do document.body.style.background. So background, and we're going to have this equal to URL, uh, basically what we have in this style sheet over here. So URL bg jpeg so let's see url bg jpeg let me change this to double quotes okay so now whenever you hit it it should mute the audio and i think that's it Audio alarm dot mute it. Okay, let's see how that works. So let's reset our alarm to 3200. See if I catch it. I did. Ah, <laughs> 32, I went to 34. 34, let's try 3410. All right, so it changed blue. And then we hit this. It turns it back off. Okay, so our alarm is working. Um, let's see inside of the style sheet. Is there anything else that we need to do? So the button looked like it was a little bit close. Um, so let's just test that out. I'm going to take that away. Actually, let's not take that away. But let's make it block because that's what it gets changed to. So it is kind of close. Um, so I think... The alarm time, the span, do we need to do something with that? Uh, let's do a margin. Uh, can we say like 20 pixels auto? Okay, that'll work. All right, so let's go back and bring this back to none. Okay, so that should be what we need. So now inside of our HTML file, I'm going to take this. That way we can just call it directly from inside of here. Usually I would do this inside of an init file, but it's not that important. So I'm just going to leave it out. All right, so let's test it out again. Let's do 35, or let's just do 3600. That's too long of a wait. So let's do 35. By the time I get over there, it's going to be done. So let's do 3555. There we go. And let's see how that works. Looks much better. And the alarm will keep going until I hit this turn off alarm. Kind of loud. Um, okay, so I think that is pretty much it uh, with this tutorial. Um, if you like it, uh, leave me a you know a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions about what I did, leave me a comment. But this kind of covers you know, some additional stuff you can do with time um, if you put it in context of what we did last time with the countdown JavaScript. So this is a pretty cool little thing. Um, if you ever want to have like your own alarm clock on your phone or on your computer and you're not using like the Windows alarm or the Mac alarm, and you just want to have like a running alarm clock that's on your browser that you know you don't have to like switch screens or anything to see. 
And this is a pretty cool little thing. If you just want to display time without the alarm, you can just remove the alarm parts of it. And you can display a countdown or a, a time clock, a digital clock on your website. But um, I think that's going to do it for this one. If you like the tutorial, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave me a comment. I try to answer them as quickly as I can. Um, but that's it for now. Um, I do appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you later.